All right, guys, so every once in a while I'll do personal tutorials for students that have questions. Uh, I'm not really sure why I make myself available to it, do it, but I do. Because I care. Um, so what I want to do, my wife just hit me. So what I want to do here is I'm going to show you guys how to edit this and fix uh, particular scenarios where your model is giving you a little bit of trouble. Um, this one does need a lot of work, but let me show you how we can get it to get a little bit better than what we have right now. One, you always want to make sure you use reference, whatever actor or person you're using. I can tell there are some aspects about this model that it isn't using reference based on the width of the head and the jawline, which isn't matching. Your jawline will always go up into your ear. So uh, one way you can fix that really quickly is to go in here and grab a face on a model. Hit the W key. You can move it down, and you can grab a line of faces if you want to. So I'll grab a group of these a little bit. There still needs some work to be fixed. There's an irregular triangle that doesn't need to be there. And we can grab them right where we think the jawline is going to be. And it's a little bit tricky doing this because we don't have a complete, that triangle breaks up the flow. But you can actually l rotate the face. We need a little bit more here. I forgot about the thin areas. We can actually go in here and rotate the jaw a little bit closer to what we want and then form things around that new positioning. So let me go back here. I'm going to deselect them for a second. Because the jaw is really crucial. The draw, the jaw, the brow, and the nose are really important parts of a three-point system you have to look out for because they're very distinct. They, everybody can always look at those and know whether your face is sculpted correctly. So they really have to be important. Not that the other stuff isn't important, but those really have to be um, modeled correctly. Otherwise, it won't read. Um, if we go over here, we look at our edge flow here. This is just stopping. Now, we want this to keep going. We also have a couple of tuxedo-type bow ties happening here. Those need to be fixed. Um, one way you can fix them is you can simply go in here. Let's go to our modeling. Sorry, I've been rendering all the time. <clears throat> We're going to go to our interactive split tool. Um, and I can go in here and just simply click and create the quad that I need, you'll notice this is still going to give us some trouble. I'm going to hit enter. And we got an, uh, a triangle and we got a few other weird stuff in here. Now a lot of times when modeling Maya, it's like a puzzle. You have to actually look at it as an active puzzle. And uh, let me grab this guy here. That's the one we want. And delete that irregular split there. You'll notice we did have a triangle here, but never fear. If you look at things just close enough, we can turn that into a quad. This one's a little weird, but we also have a five side here, so we know that we can collapse this. So I can grab that edge. I'll go in here, and I'll use the collapse tool, and I don't have it active on my uh, my set here. But you notice, again, we, we find ourselves back at a triangle. <clears throat> but this isn't necessarily bad or doomsday. What we need to do is slide some of our edges. I'm going to double click on this edge here. We're going to go to uh, Slide Edge Tool. And we're going to slide this edge on our model. And we can shuffle some of the edges around. And believe it or not, we can actually make it so that we can use another split on this guy and rearrange things accordingly. Let me show you how that works. So I'll grab this vertice here. I'll hit the W key, move this around a little bit so we can get the appropriate angle of what we need. So we got like this guy. I don't want it to be an irregular quad. There's no need for it. But we do need another split. So I'm going to do the insert edge loop. <clears throat> so let's go my insert edge loop. Oh, control Z. Don't do it there, buddy. I'll do it here. We'll go all the way around the head. And with that irregular quad, I can now go in here and tweak things out so I can maybe move things and adjust them according to what I need. Now you'll notice it's getting a little bit odd. Now this is one way we can handle this as we push and shove things around and I can smooth it out. Unfortunately, when you smile, notice that it's going to collapse weird. Now one reason I'm cutting this, I want to show, point this out. We need a clean edge flow around the mouth. There has to be there. So if we tweak that out, like I said before, you might want to avoid a regular quad in this area because it just looks odd and doesn't deform correctly. So let me do control Z, go back in here. So what we can do is we can go in here and we can even collapse this set with these edges already selected by Maya. I can collapse it and we'll do collapse again. Oh, Maya doesn't recognize because it's still in the auditing mode. 
I'll try it now. Still may not do it. There he goes. So I can collapse that, keep that quad, and just split a brand new one down here, and it will actually play a lot nicer. Now, it's a quick way to fix that. We could even fudge with that a little bit more. Let me do insert edge loop if we wanted to. But notice this is a lot cleaner, a lot quicker of cleaning that up. <clears throat> notice that we got some sharp angles and you gotta watch out for these and a quick way to fix these if you're just strictly doing this in Maya maybe oops sorry maybe you're past the sculpt uh, moments right now and you're just mainly just trying to clean things up we can go to our under mesh and go to sculpt geometry tool in Maya now they made some improvements to this tool it's actually kind of nice so I can go in here and it's a very old school tool I can lower my max displacement I can switch to smooth I can hit the B key and as I hit the B key I will left mouse drag to lower that to a decent size. You can also see a change here under radius. And that's where you can control it. But with this, I can now smooth out these areas that are too hard or angled too sharply. It actually works really nice. You'll notice it's already looking good just by cleaning some of these edges up. And we can make her a little bit more feminine doing this. Um, and we can even adjust the nose if we wanted to. And the nose needs to actually take on reference of an actual um, character. So you just be careful of that. Now the nostrils are super small right now. They need to be bigger. <clears throat> and one more way we can do that. We can go in here and use the same tool and use like an inflate type of deal. Where you can pull out. Now that's a little too strong. We will lower that. And we will pull this out a little bit. And we can see kind of what we're looking at a little bit better. And then we can smooth out some of the other stuff. There we go. So the nostrils, um, you'll notice already just by me doing that, that the hole is not catering to the loop. This is really important when making noses. So you have to make sure that that nostril supporting, if you look at a nose, you will see, and if you go to my Pinterest real quick, let's go to my Pinterest. Uh, If you look at it, I follow a few of my fellow colleagues uh, that are working out there. And one of them is Katya. She's really great. She works for, uh, for Blizzard as a character artist. But she has a great blog on faces. Let me see if I can find it. There we go. Let's go to faces here. <clears throat> um, not blog, but Pinterest. If you look at these um, areas, you'll notice the nose and the nostrils are right next to where the hole is going to be at. So the nostrils have to wrap around each other. So they have to wrap around that open cavity area. They can't be separate like what we have right now. This, she's a great example here of the nostril and catering around the flesh wrapping around that whole region. So if we go back in here, we know that this is too small. This needs to be quite bigger. And to do so, what I recommend is maybe even deleting some of these faces and extruding those edges back up again. And to do that really quickly, I will show. I will just delete these guys, delete the interior. And uh, we can start extruding again and reshaping this nostril. Now this nostril has way too much detail for what it's supposed to be doing and taking up way too much space. So we can remove some of this and make it again a lot more simple a lot more simple on shape and size on it comes to the nostril here we don't want a uninostril so let me go back a few steps I probably deleted too much uninostril psi nostril kind of like a cyclops uh, what we can do is make this just bigger by removing these guys even there we go and let's get the rest of them with that open, you'll notice it already looks logically a little bit better. But we also need to get rid of this. And you'll notice you got to be careful when you model that you don't get this candy cane effect. That happens a lot with the eyeballs, which we'll cover in a second. You got to make sure that you keep your edge flows reasonable and they run into themselves. If you don't, they'll run into this big arc loop and it's really a pain in the butt to try to fix. So what we're going to do is just keep it local to this. And we're going to remove that. and remove this. <clears throat> so now when you go to the edge flow 
will extrude and I'll go to uh, a world uh, controller instead of local because it starts out world clicking on that widget allows me to change it and I can uh, scale these in and then from here if I wanted I could do a pen polygon but I want to make sure that I don't go too far out now even this might be a little bit too much detail for what we want because you want to keep the nostril really simple but that's how you can cap this off you don't need an extra necessarily interior if we weld it though it will look like a diamond so we could even cap this off as it is by using a pen poly now you'll notice we get that weird crashing happen again irregular quads and triangles that don't need to be there to try to define that nostril that's why you want to keep the nostril edges within looping within themselves so just be careful of that uh, let me see here so the jaw needs to be cleaned up we cleaned up some of the mouth area let's go to the eye and then we'll again fix the scale and the width of this head and again I'm speaking specifically to the student insert edge loop and now if I you'll notice when I try to insert edge loop it only goes on the outside because of that pesky triangle so what you want to do is you want to make this into a quad there's no reason to break these guys up no reason to break up the band and we're going to go to the uh, interactive split tool. Go here, here, and here. And uh, that's as far as I'll take it. I don't need to go too far into the ocular cavity. There we go. And I'll hit enter. So with that split up, now we can go in here, remove this irregular, though that triangle is in the way. And this is a lot cleaner. And you want to do the same thing with this guy too. I won't bother with it. But what you want to do is start making your edge flows clean and these triangles, the only reason you put them in games is for deformations. Now, this is for a game class, like, like they cleared everybody. You you only have that for deformations. Now, your teachers will yell at you and say, only quads, because quads are easier to work with. You know what you're getting. And you can have irregular quads. But in games, you have low, you have lower poly sometimes you have to deal with, so making triangles for deformations is smart, is a smart way to tackle. But you've got to be smart about it. Like right here, that's not going to help anybody. Won't even help a blink. Not even necessary. We can we need another edge to define this, so we'd go all the way across. Now to make eyelids, easy, simple, cheesy, cheesy. I'm going to grab those edges here once I got this all cleaned up. We don't yet, but we'll pretend we do. I'll go in here and extrude this. And you can simply make eyelids. Look at that, how quickly we did that. We can even switch to world mode and just scale down, which is more the more efficient way and pull it out. And you instantly have some eyelids. She's totally been high. She's been doing drugs. All right, cool. So that's about it. I want to make sure I point out how to fix that nose the proper way. Again, keep it consistent. Look at a reference for a nose. If you have problems with it, let me know. Again, I'm speaking to the student in particular. Jawline needs to wrap into the ear. So make an area for the ear, and then you can make the jaw follow along that path. The edges need to be cleaned up here. Keep them all quads for now, and watch your pallet count as you work. That's about it for this one. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.